Guys, it's Monday. Monday, we typically work on snatches. Basically, anything has to do with the snatch, whether that's pulling or receiving. And we are also in a muscle building phase. So beginners, flat out, if you're just starting out, if you're a little older, if you're in your 40s, if you're in your mid 30s, if you're in your mid 40s, whatever, man. And you're literally just looking for a strength and conditioning program that's Olympic weightlifting oriented. You've come to the right place. Nobody here is going to the Olympics or to a world championship anytime soon. Are we all over the hill over here at six out of six? All right, now, if you plan on breaking any world records, like you're chasing down, lose, last snatch, then this is not the place for you, bro. You gotta check out another channel. As I just stated, nobody here is going to the Olympics, man. Nobody's going to a national championship. Nobody's going to a world championship. There's nobody like that just got back from Columbia at the world championships. None of that. You are simply just 35, 36, 37, 42, and you're just literally looking to get stronger as you start getting closer into your elderly years. You know what I'm saying? Look, you're somebody that just realizes that, look, from the time I'm like 67, 68, 69, I am completely out of muscle building phase, and I'm literally just trying to maintain the muscle that I built up until this point in my life, and you realize that at 40, you are basically at the tipping point, bro. Some of you may be watching this and be like, look, bro, 40's not that old. Mm. For an athlete, yeah. As I just stated, at 40, you're probably not gonna make the Olympics. You're not gonna make any national scenes. All of those dreams and aspirations are in the past, bro. Not to mention, if you're at an age like 40, if you just plus 10 yourself, in other words, add another 10 years to where you're at now, which would be 50, 51, 52, it becomes then extremely difficult to build muscle at that age. Your testosterone production from 40 to 50 drops so significantly. When you hit about the 35, 40 year old time frame in your life, you know for a fact that you only have a very minimum time to gain muscle. Why do I keep talking about gaining muscle? Well, what are some characteristics that you notice about elderly people? On the average, do you typically see muscle bound elderly people? Or do you kind of start to shrivel up into like the walking letter C? Why is this? Well, it's because most people spend all of their youth not building any muscle. They spend all of their youth either working or partying or whatever the case may be. Whatever they doing, it's not in the gym building muscle. It's only until they start to get older like 50, 55, 60, that they then realize how important muscle is. By then it's too late. Now you're stuck doing laps at the mall on Sunday morning. That's why this channel is perfect for you if you are 40 years old, because this channel focuses on strength, flexibility, and muscle building, but not muscle building to the point to where I'm gonna get on stage and flex. But we like to focus on compound muscle groups, the ones you're gonna need when you're 76. Like I said, today is a Monday workout. The reason why I'm stressing that is because perhaps maybe you can save this workout in your playlist here on YouTube. That way every Monday you can revert back to a video like this. Everyone needs to be on a different cycle. Everyone's life is different. Everyone's on different corners of the earth, but everyone has a Monday. The only difference is, are you in an eight week muscle building phase or are you in an eight week strength building phase? You can decide for yourself where that eight week starts and ends and where you pick up with strength and then where that ends eight weeks later or five weeks later, however long you want your, your phases to be, that's also up to you. But the only thing that doesn't change is what actually happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through the week. Like I said, every Monday we focus on snatch oriented movements. Since we are muscle building, all that means is that we're gonna do a lot of whatever we're gonna do. Here's an example, and this is an extremely transferable movement that goes from drill to the actual movement of snatch. Okay, we have just outside of the hip stance here. So if I was to squat, I can facilitate a squat. Okay, that's basically how wide I want my feet. Okay, I'm just using the bar here and I'm gonna squat down and I'm gonna use a wide grip or a snatch grip. I'm not gonna worry about hook gripping or anything like that just yet, but I want you to try to get yourself into this position here. I'm sitting down, my head and eyes are up, my arms are straight. I'm not forcing them to be straight, I'm just letting the bar pull them straight. From here, we're gonna clear the bar with our knees back, and then we're going to finish the deadlift. 
Okay, I'm just getting ourselves into what's called a high hang position. Okay, from this position here, we're going to sit, stand, and pull. Okay, once again, sit, stand, pull, sit, stand, pull, sit, stand, pull, sit, stand, pull, and hold this time. Stand, pull, and hold, and let it come down nice and slow. Sit, stand, pull, and hold, let it come down nice and slow. Sit, stand, pull, and hold. Let it come down nice and slow, get some eccentric. Key points of this movement here is I'm keeping my elbows forward as I bring the bar up. Okay, so I'm not bringing the bar up and out this way. I'm bringing my elbows forward, elbows and shoulders forward, and I'm pulling the bar up close to my sternum. Okay, and ultimately that is the goal. I wanna try and pull the bar up to right at my lower chest or my sternum. to 17 reps. I want you to continue to add weight until you can no longer do 12 to 17 reps. The moment you add weight that you can no longer do 12 to 17 reps, I want you to back that weight off or go back to the previous weight. Do that one more set. I'm not gonna recommend you do three sets, four sets, five sets. I want you to do as many sets as you want. Just do more than one, all right? Just do more than one or two sets and I think we're good to go. I'm gonna recommend that you guys use straps when you guys are doing these pulls, both from the hips and from the ground, basically this whole workout, I want you guys to get used to using straps. Even if you're just using the bar, use straps. Why? Because it gets you used to using straps. For this movement, we wanna focus on pulling, not our grip. We want to essentially eliminate any requirement to grip this bar. We wanna focus on our pulling muscles and our pulling muscles only and i would like to invite you on a mental journey with me here for a second come on come on come on in okay you've uh you've heard of the hook grip before haven't you if you haven't it's the grip technique utilized by olympic weightlifters which allows us to be able to grip more weight by locking in our grip using primarily our middle finger over our thumbs okay so if you've done even just a little bit of Olympic weightlifting, you know about the hook grip, and most likely you've been utilizing the hook grip throughout your Olympic weightlifting endeavors, especially if you've done CrossFit. And no matter what weight is on the barbell, you still use the hook grip. Well, if the hook grip methodology says that it allows us to be able to grip and lock in more weight, essentially using our fingers instead of our forearm muscles. And we are hook gripping, no matter how much weight's on the bar, 75, 95, 225, 250, we're still hook gripping. Then we can use straps as just merely an additional tool to ensure that none of our mental focus or mental faculties are being devoted towards grip. That way we can maximize how much time under tension we have on our muscles that we're training for the day. Use straps even when the weight's not heavy enough to use straps. Use straps. Do I use them all the time? No. It's mostly for the pulling stuff like we're doing today. If we're doing like a lot of volume on pulling, I like to use the straps just so I can get more volume in. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so back to the second movement of the day. Okay, we're using the straps. Nice wide grip. Okay, now this is the exact same setup as just a regular snatch. Okay, so from the bottom up, sitting up nice and tall, straight arms and pull up. And at the end, we just do a light little tug there at the end. One more time. Pull. Tug at the end. Reset. Pull. Oh. 
12 to 17 reps on these. Take a few minutes of rest in between each set and continue to add weight until you can no longer do 12 reps, 13 reps. Okay, if you start to add weight and you can only do like six reps, seven reps, I would say that we're no longer achieving the stimulus of muscle building. So just like with the sternum pulls on the first exercise, once you start putting on weight and you can no longer do 12 reps, dump about 20 pounds and then do another set of 15 or so. Happy lifting. In conclusion, this burns, this hurts, the pain is excruciating. But at this point in time, we're about two weeks into hypertrophy meso cycle. So just get used to it burning, get used to it being uncomfortable. These two exercises specifically are going to help you build the much needed muscle you need to become a better Olympic weightlifter.